So let's say you have lost one, one tooth, one or more teeth. So let's, uh, and then let's assume that some time has passed by and you then decide after a period of two or three or more years that these holes need to be then uh, filled back with missing teeth. And then you come to your dentist and he says you have two options, you can put in place a dental bridge or you can place one or more implants depending on your case. And then you decide, oh, I don't want to, um, I don't want to cut down my, my neighbor a healthy teeth to make a uh, abutment, abutment teeth for my pontics for my pontics for the bridge. I want to place uh, implants in my jaw so I don't need to cut down my healthy teeth. Okay, so then the doctor examines your mouth and everything and he says, oh, you do not have enough bone anymore. Hmm. And this is where the topic starts. So. When we talk about when we talk about uh, bone loss uh, after tooth extraction, it is mainly because your body is really an amazing organism in preserving stuff, uh, which uh, in which I mean that every time uh, regarding uh, regarding the topic when we talk about the oral cavity, every time a tooth is extracted from the alveola from the alveolar bone this remaining bone structure that has been like a shell to hold the tooth in place uh, within boundaries is slowly then being resorbed by the body because the body has no use of that bony tissue anymore so after a period of minimum uh, some few months the bone will start to shrink shrink all the way down to the minimum minimum requirements it needs to agree depending on the depending on the situation in the mouth. It shrink, 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 shrinks more, some uh, resorbs more and sometimes it resorbs less. It really depends on the situation itself. But when this happens and you want to place dental implants, sometimes there is not enough bone. Why? Because you need to place your dental implants in a healthy bone volume uh, where that implant can then be uh, completely also integrated and healed within the bone tissue. And on top of it, um, after a and after that, you can place a dental crown on this on that implant. Um, so when we talk about when we talk about bone augmentation, so this is called a tech, this is a surgical technique, which we then augment the missing bone tissue uh, with various different types of bone products or even your patient's own patient's own bone. So today in the market we have. Uh, different types of bone available from uh, let's say xenograft bone which is a bone from um, animal origin most times from let's say cow or from pig then there are also alloplastic materials that are mostly from hydroxyapatite so, which is a from hydroxyapatite bone which is a natural mineral uh, that is primarily a comp the primary component of bone after that we have allografts allografts are actually in some in some countries are allowed and some are not uh, they are a bone grafting materials from uh, deceased human beings which all the proteins and all the uh, immunological factors like in other animals like in xenografts have been removed and only the and only the hard part of the bone is being kept so you can use it as a augmentation material and there are other two thing, other two types of materials that are I think are the best types of materials for bone augmentation and this is autografts from patients from the patient itself where we use a donor site in the mandibula or in the maxilla depend or an other type of, of body if a larger augmentation is needed or growth factors from the patient's blood. Um, this procedure is the point the goal of this procedure is to regain the missing volume uh, of the lost bone so a implants with certain size diameter and length can be placed in this area and needs to be completely surrounded by bony tissue. The surgical procedure can be done separately first you do the augmentation procedure you wait several months for the bone to completely heal and stabilize in the wound and after then you can place the implants. Sometimes you can place the implants parallel with bone augmentation if the situation presents itself um, and you can do once two things in one surgery which is really better for the patient but these types uh, of uh, procedures need to be carefully selected so you don't have uh, 
two fail two failed attempts to create to create a stable solution. You, if something happens, sometimes the bone augmentation can fail, and also the implant placement. So you have two complications in one surgery. So this is something uh, your dentist or or your surgeon needs to be really careful when when planning the surgery uh, ahead. After surgery, after surgery has been done, uh, post-operative protocols must be must be. Uh, you need to listen to the protocols and how to treat your wound in your mouth to avoid smoking, to, drink, to take your antibiotics, to take your painkillers and to rest uh, three to seven days depending on the severity of the case. Uh, so your healing period uh, can, uh, can go complication free. Uh, after a series of months, after the bone augmentation is done and finished, uh, the implants are then opened and opened, and you can start to create your prosthodontics, your crowns and bridges, or or over the edges. I really hope you find you found the information you needed in this video. I uh, hope you like it. Uh, you can like and subscribe to my channel uh, to uh, to view my future content and to check my other videos as well. Uh, if you have any questions, comment down below, and I hope to see you uh, in future videos and comments. Bye.